I'd like to actually send this um, song out today to a dearly departed Unity minister named Michael Moran. We just lost him this week, and he was one of the people behind the founding or the starting of the Seasons for Nonviolence, which just ended on Thursday, April 4th, which is the anniversary of the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He founded Spiritual Life Center in Sacramento, and many years ago during the Season for Nonviolence commissioned this song. I was pleased to go back there and share it with their congregation. It's love that shines Ooh. I ask today For compassion Toward the great And toward the small I ask today For right action May I always Heed the call I ask today Hey. 
love that shines in me. John, Nick, and Bill. Always delightful to have you. We probably wore you out for on Easter too. That was a lot. Sorry, I'll stop talking about that. Okay. So we're moving forward. We have this fabulous slide that Carly made for our power of wisdom. And Again, just a reminder that we're looking at these, we're, I'm using the book Divine Audacity, roughly, uh, by Reverend Linda Martella Whit Whitsitt, to uncover these 12 capacities. We have others, but these are the main ones. In an effort to bring about what she calls Divine Audacity, which is bold spiritual living under the radical presence, premise, <laughs> that I am divine that my nature, your nature, is divine. Now we have a human nature, right? And that has some limits and some challenges. It's not as though we just, as I said on Easter, puff and puff and blow the house down because we're divine. No, it actually centers us in a, a, a level of wisdom that we're gonna be talking about today. But to claim that oneness, right? That within us, there is that life, that light, that wisdom, that love. And oftentimes it's when we reach the limits of what this can do for us that we find the depth of that, yes? And so we use these spiritual capacities in various levels and we probably don't always think about them as spiritual uh, capacities, but at their highest level, they work to uh, support us in living this life of divine audacity, to know that there is that within me, that even when I'm scared, or even when I'm uncertain, or even when I'm sick, or is more than that. How do I connect with that? How do I remember that? And so these, these powers, these capacities, these lights within us are ultimately to serve that, to serve our knowing and revealing this Christ consciousness that lives within us. So the light of wisdom defined is our power of judgment, evaluation, appraisal, discernment, and intuition, all in service of making wise decisions. While it involves knowledge, wisdom is more than knowledge, right? Knowing something is only so good, you've got to know how to apply it and when to apply it. And it's best balanced with love, as we'll see. I had a moment this morning with Bob. I was very wise. Bob was helping me take down a table, and I knew how to do it. And I said, don't lay it down. <laughs> so temper our wisdom with love. And he probably could have heard that a little bit better, too. Oh, she's wise instead of, she's grouchy this morning. <laughs> Wisdom also works alongside the light of understanding, which is our ability to comprehend, to, to learn something new, to comprehend it, to apply it. And here's what I want to say. Just think about all the things we can do that we don't even think. Isn't it kind of amazing we can do that? That's kind of like to recognize that these are innate spiritual capacities that we can develop as we recognize their, their, their fullness. They are represented, each of these 12 powers uh, was taken by our co-founder Charles Fillmore to metaphysically rep be represented by a disciple, one of the disciples called by Jesus. And so our wisdom faculty is said to be represented by James, the son of Zebedee, the brother of John, who remembers what they call John and James? The sons of thunder. Love and wisdom. Love and wisdom. 
Love without wisdom can be a little blind. We can get ourselves into some stuff. Wisdom without love can be a little harsh. Ask Bob. It's interesting to note that the three disciples who were with Jesus on his most particularly significant occasions in his life were the brothers, John and James, representing love and wisdom, and Peter, representing faith. So that tells us something about as we're developing our spiritual awareness. Faith is crucial. Unless we have some perception that there's more of us and more to life, uh, We don't go very far spiritually, right? So we have a perception of that and then we begin to actually live as if it's true, even though we may not have physical evidence for it. And then what happens? We start to have some physical evidence for it. And then wisdom and love. Also, in order to uh, know how to apply and how to live Accordingly, wisely, knowing that we are more, that the more to us, if you will, and the more to life. And then love is that power that, that seeks to, that attracts us and harmonizes us and unifies us with whatever we set our love on. So again, we've got some responsibility there. Ultimately, we want to l- harmonize and unify with this idea and with this understanding and with this awareness, with this wisdom that there is that within me that is more than I can ever imagine. How do I tap into that? How do I get me a little bit out of the way sometimes, yeah? Wisdom is also associated with our intuition, which is really getting really close to our highest spiritual capacity. That within us that knows, without words, without, there's a knowing, yes? Linda Martella Witsit, who wrote Divine Audacity, refers to our our intuition as our uh uh-oh or our uh aha. Tells us when something's not quite right, maybe maybe even safe, uh uh-oh, or uh aha, that is the truth, that's what I need to do. And you know what I'm recognizing, and I have a a teenage daughter that has my concern in this level, young people in particular, and it's true for us too, us wise people, just think about how much we have to navigate all that's coming at us all the time, right? And these young people are in it. I mean, it is coming at them all the time. It's part of their social Uh, experience and they're not connected with that Uh, and it's it it, it's part of that anxiety that they're feeling and so I'm feeling anxiety and I know better right so it's really important um, I think part of what we're coming to in terms of um, recognizing how we've kind of become I have to be careful when I say this disembodied and say something else that's weird and gross. Um, and I've done it. Uh, is that we're, we kind of live from here up, right? And not only does that keep us out of this very wise center of our heart, but also that within us that is wise, that knows, that knows the way for us. So intuition is very important. I do have a slide that has all this on there. Thank you, Carly. It's not nearly as gorgeous as yours. Yeah. Uh, But that has all the information you'll ever want to know, and then you'll never forget that solar plex area in your gut. It's a little hollow there, but it, it guides you. And, you know, when we talk about... So in the day when Charles Fillmore was teaching about this power of wisdom, he called it the power of judgment. And it's... Judgment gets a bad rap, yeah? Because we, we don't want to be judgmental. We're not supposed to be judgmental. But we use the power of judgment all the time. So we can just get over that, uh, that we need to use it wisely. We're not talking about implying value on other people or ourselves or condemning. That's the kind of judgment we want to steer clear of. But really, um, 
you may, you know, we make judgments all the time. You made a judgment what to wear, what to eat for breakfast. You made a judgment to even come here today. You made a good one. <laughs> right? But you're comparing and contrasting. What do I, what? So that's judgment. We shouldn't be judgmental, which is true, which is by that we mean that condemning, particularly of others and self, because we never know what's going on inside, on inside of another person. We don't even know what's going on in us half the time, right? Webster's, listen to this. I, look up, I looked up judgment in Webster's Dictionary. Number one is just fine. The ability to make considered decisions or come to sensible conclusions. Number two, a misfortune or calamity viewed as divine punishment. In the dictionary. <laughs> Something bad happens, God is punishing you. So commonly accepted that God judges us harshly that it's a dictionary definition. The truth is, we do this. There is no evidence other than through the words of men trying to understand God, that God is judging. God is the power by which we can judge and discern. So we do that. Not us here, of course, but humans. <laughs> God, divine mind and intelligence is that power by which judgment and wisdom can occur at all. But we decide how we use it. And we often judge from our limited sense of self, which is where we become judgmental of ourselves, of others, and even of God. So this is a perfect example of how we can use these abilities from kind of a persona or a personal, egoic-driven level up to a fuller level that recognizes there is, that we are connected ultimately to spirit and to each other. <sighs> I'm going to take a breath. So wisdom, when we use it just from our personality level, it, again, there's good and we need to use it sometimes as well. The ability to judge, evaluate, discern, be wise, appraise, and apply what is known based on our senses, our thoughts, our beliefs, and our feelings. We use our judgment, as I said, to decide what we eat, what we wear, who we date, all of that. We also use judgment to be judgmental discriminatory and shrewd. That's how we can use it. And that's what we want to be aware of. This misuse of judgment, this is important. I have it, I know it is because it says so right here. Important, circled, circled. This misuse of judgment actually minimizes options, keeping us stuck rather than expanding in order to see and claim options, new ideas, new possibilities, new perspectives. Judgment from that perspective has sort of a, this is the final answer. You know that? You've heard it from others and you've given it to others. I know, I'm guessing because I have. This, this is the final answer feeling which closes us off to receptivity and possibility of mutual understanding. That's what's happening all around us. I'm right. There's no... There's no mutuality. We can't. And who wants a God like that? Who, even, who wants to live like that? I mean, we're seeing <laughs> how it is to live like that in some capacity. There's a right way. There's a wrong way. You are right. You are wrong. So again, we look to our elder brother, the great teacher, the way shower, one of many, Jesus, who gives us this great direction. Do not judge by appearance, but judge with right judgment. In other words, what you see or what you think you see, which is meant by appearance, is always limited, first of all, by your vision, by what you can even see and where you even look. And then what you make what you see mean. Right? So just know that. This isn't a condemnation. This is just an awareness. Okay. I can only know so much through my senses and even through my thinking mind. There's some limits. Have you ever made a conclusion about someone 
or a situation that ended up being totally wrong? I haven't. I'd like to know about that. <laughs> Just wondered if I could ask any of you. Yeah. Yeah, there's a deeper level of uh, a deeper level to appearance that requires a depth of perception. To be able to conceive of something beyond what we can see, touch, taste, hear, and feel, even what we might think, to be able to conceive of this notion of God and of that within us that is of not that is not material of nature but spiritual. And that there is something happening in and through our lives and in and through our world that is part of our coming to know that more. And to know that within ourselves more. So, again, that that involves some faith to perceive something beyond literally what's happening to us sometimes. What might be wanting to happen within us. Eric Butterworth used to say, things can happen to you, things can happen all around you, but what matters the most is what happens within you. What you make that mean about yourself and about other people. So you can judge by appearances. Some of you might, in fact, have judged my fabulous pants today. (laughs) Oh, you don't have to clap. I just, I upgraded my I Dream a Genie pants and I feel very (laughs) proud about that. I love me some I Dream of Genie. But you, you could make some conclusions. You could make some judgments based on what you see. You know, what you perceive around my age or my intelligence or my beauty or <laughs> my stage in life, right? Compared to some social norms, you could make some judgments about me. I could tell you something about me that nobody knows. But I won't, because you'll judge me. (laughs) Ah. I I will tell you something. I bet I judge myself harder than any of you ever could. And you know that about you, too. Why do you do that? Why do we do that? It's so painful. It's so painful. And then I feel like that's the part of us that has projected. We blame it on the people that wrote the Bible millions of years ago. But we still do it. We still think of this judgmental God somehow. But it's in us. We do it to ourselves. What is the standard that we're comparing ourselves to? It's something out there. It's an appearance. Judge by righteous judgment means judge by what you are knowing to be true about yourself, no matter what anybody else tells you, no matter what the world tells you. Oh, I've got a good thing right now for this. I didn't know if I could use it, but I'm going to use it right now. You know, if I can find it, I'm going to use it. Ed Rabel, great metaphysics teacher back in the day. I'm going to give you this glimpse of wisdom that he says this, you are the master of your own existence. You are the I am who decides what your emotional self, your thinking self will or will not do. Whenever you feel a kind of impression made upon you by life, in other words, a restriction or a demand or whatever it is coming at you, whenever you feel that, take a moment to realize you are free. You have just a brief moment, usually, before your mind goes to the next way you're not free. But take that moment to realize right there and now you are free in how you respond to that. Do you take that on? Do you respond to it? Do you react to it? Or do you remember who and what you are and respond from that place, if at all? He says... Try to react according to the truth you are learning rather than public opinion or negative programming. Good luck. we got to be here every day. I mean, public opinion and programming is everywhere. Another reason that it's so important for our children to have some basis. I don't care. I'm not trying to say you got to go to church. 
I kind of am, but some basis to ground them in the depth that they are. So he says this, an important thing to keep in mind if you want to keep your sensation area, this personality, this I got to know everything through these senses. If you want to keep that consciousness in tune with spirit, always make your own decision as to how you will react to any impression made on, upon you by life. No matter where it comes from, you decide on your own reaction. This is what it means to take personal responsibility, which is the best use of our wisdom. Oh, if we could only handle that within us that we are so quick to say. Oh, what's that old saying? When you point one finger at you, I got three pointing at me. Who made that up? <laughs> this is the bottom line that, that I wanted to read from, from Ed. Do not let mass consciousness decide for you, which most people do popular think. And now we have our own think tanks that sound just like us. We don't even have to have some contrast and figure out how we can actually not think the same thing but still learn from each other, still love each other. Life makes a certain impression on you and automatically without thinking, if you let it, you recall how everybody else reacts or how they think you should react or how you've been taught to react. So we take that minute, that's the wisdom there, to really say, do I believe this? How do I want to react? And what, from what place do I want to come from? And there's that love again, tempering what we know. Oh, I know what to do. Sit down, I'll tell you. Lastly, in the book, Divine Audacity, Linda Martellowitzit makes this, takes this, makes this play. It's not really a play, but she, she reminds us of the metaphysical or allegorical meaning of this idea of the judgment day. That really, some version exists within all of the major faith traditions. That God will come down and judge, and some people will go here and some people will go there. What's happening? That's already happening. We are doing that all the time in our minds. And a lot, sometimes we put ourselves in that place we don't really want to go. She says that this can really be considered that every day is judgment day as it occurs through self-evaluation. Not judgment, but evaluation. How am I doing? How am I taking all of this that we know and living it? How am I applying it when I'm frustrated? with the table, and just knowing when I don't, and redirecting, recorrecting. Self-evaluation would have us ask things like, what is the right thing for me to do? What of my true nature am I here to express in this situation, rather than react? What can I bring to it that could help? Help the situation and help me. You know, when we go into negative judgment about other people or other situations, it affects us. We are experiencing the negativity. Not necessarily, they may not even know, they're just singing with zippity doo -dah. And what is the truth underlying this appearance? That's a good one to ask. What would I choose to do if I knew I was love? in this situation, or if I knew I had access to wisdom in this situation. <clears throat> so we use judgment all the time, and the invitation is to be mindful of how we use it, and to be using it from the highest level that we can imagine at any given moment, that we are expressions of divine wisdom right here, right now. How would I respond? And it takes, take that minute to remember that because there is that within us that does react. That's why we take that time to be still and to know. To know more of us. 
that we can't always hear when we're moving about. So we'll take some time to do that now. Just invite you to take a deep breath. I've said a lot to you. Let it land where it will. I'm going to ring the singing bowl that invites us to drop from our head to our heart. for you with your breath sort of fall in that pit of your stomach you might even put your hand there under your diaphragm that place within our body that radiates wisdom our wisdom center let's just take a breath and just invite this idea that there's nothing you have to do right now you're just going to be in this moment Focusing, if it is easy for you, perhaps even seeing a a bright yellow light sort of emanating in that space in your solar plexus, sort of a midday sunshine color. Just activating that wisdom center, that place within you that already knows. It knows you, it knows you your journey. Let's just breathe into that place. Even if you can't hardly feel it, just trust that it's there. Taking a deep breath, and if you see that bright yellow light, just allowing yourself to take this moment to radiate in the presence of divine wisdom that resides within you and resides within all of creation. We see it so easily in nature, moving and flowing with great ease and order and wisdom. That's the truth of our being as well. And so grounded in that place of wisdom within you, which is your true nature, we can let go a bit of the worry about knowing right and wrong. We can release our tendency to judge, to judge ourselves so harshly. We can begin to connect with that still, small voice within. That voice of our inner knower. That voice of spirit that really does know every atom and cell and thought and feeling. It's imbued in all of it. So we welcome it by focusing our attention on it, by beginning to trust it, by being patient with ourselves in that discovery. Can we take a breath and relax into the idea that everything we need to know exists within us if we will listen, if we will relax our grip, it will guide us, it will steady us. So I just invite you to see how that lands with you. Can you 
offer that to yourself. I can trust this wisdom within me. I welcome it. I'm open to receiving its inspiration. And in the process, every day, in every way, we have to release every thought, every belief that wants to claim lack and limitation and worthiness. Let it go. Thank you. Thank you, mind that thinks it knows. I'm going to let that go, and I'm going to claim that I am the divine power of wisdom right here, right now. Claim that for yourself. I am the divine power of wisdom. That is the I am of you, the truth of you. I am wise. And we can take a moment, any time, any day, any place to connect with this. We have that moment to choose and we take it wisely. I am wise. We let that permeate through our being today and through our life this week. If we're making a decision, if we're coming into challenges of any sort, as life will happen. Can we rest in this assurance? There is that within me that knows what I need to know. And as we let that be, so it becomes stronger and stronger and stronger within us. So we let that be our way this day. Releasing, letting go, and claiming, I am wise. Take a deep breath. Come back to this time and space if you haven't already. Next week we'll be talking more about, uh, this is not working, there we go, uh, intuition. Exploring that as a spiritual power and connecting with it. So I hope you'll join us. Now is the time in our service where we give of our good in support of this 
beautiful movement known as Unity Spiritual Center Denver, which is completely funded by your love and donations and prayers and participation. So thank you for all the ways that you do that. Um, there are baskets in the back if you want to leave cash or check. If you still have those things on your person. <laughs> I'm always surprised when I have cash. Uh, otherwise, there's a way you can give electronically. Many of you do that already, and you can um, look in your bulletin for information and a QR code to do that. Um, there's also a QR code in the back that will help you do that. So however you are giving, we know that these gifts are blessed because they're given in love. And love goes forward to do the work of good in the world. So let's bless our love offering together. Divine love, as me, blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, all that I receive. I am thankful. Thank you. Thank you. This is a uh... The New Orleans Jazz Festival month, so we're gonna we're gonna take you to New Orleans. We invite you to get up and move if you'd like to. It's hard not to with this song. Yeah, just a love's promise. 